There were once two watchmakers, both masters of their craft. However, their approach to creating timepieces was vastly different. The first watchmaker, let's call him Elias, crafted his watches piece by piece. Each tiny component was meticulously designed and assembled, resulting in beautifully intricate, albeit fragile, watches. If a single cog was disrupted, the entire watch would stop ticking. Now, the second watchmaker, whom we'll name Hiram, took a different approach. Hiram also crafted beautiful watches, but he assembled them in stable, interconnected modules. If a single part failed, the rest of the watch would continue ticking, buying Hiram precious time to fix the malfunctioning component. Over time, Elias's watches began to lose their charm. They were too delicate, too prone to failure. Customers grew weary of their watches constantly breaking down. On the other hand, Hiram's watches, sturdy and reliable, gained popularity. He had built a system that could withstand individual failures and still function efficiently. This tale of two watchmakers serves as a metaphor for two different approaches to building companies. Elias represents those who focus on individual products or ideas, while Hiram embodies the concept of clock building. Rather than focusing on a single time-telling product, Hiram understood the importance of creating a system, a company that could outlast individual products or ideas. His approach was not just about building a watch, it was about developing a resilient watchmaking process that could weather the trials of time and change. This is the essence of clock building, an essential ingredient for creating enduring, visionary companies. So, like our more successful watchmaker, the first lesson from Built to Last is about building a company that can stand the test of time. Have you ever felt torn between two seemingly contradictory ideas? Now, imagine trying to run a company with such opposing forces. This is where the genius of AND comes into play. Successful companies have mastered the art of balancing these contradictions. They maintain stability while embracing change. They order the chaos and they marry conservatism with progressiveness. Picture a tightrope walker balancing on a thin wire. On one side is the comfort of stability, the other the thrill of change. They don't simply choose one and ignore the other. Instead, they walk the fine line, embracing both. It's not about choosing between preserving the old and inventing the new, but rather integrating the two into a harmonious balance. Similarly, successful corporations don't just stick to the familiar, they innovate while upholding their core principles. They foster a culture of progressiveness while remaining rooted in tradition. This duality, this genius of AND, is what propels them forward. The balance between order and chaos, stability and change, conservatism and progressiveness, it's a dance. A dance that successful companies have learned to master. They don't just survive amidst these contradictions, they thrive on them. They understand that it's not about choosing one over the other, but about finding the perfect balance between the two. So, lesson two teaches us to embrace this balance, to revel in the genius of AND. Why do you think companies exist? A common answer might be, to make profits, of course. But if we dive into the teachings of built to last, we learn that the truly great companies, the ones that stand the test of time, have a purpose that goes far beyond just making money. They have a core ideology, a set of deeply held values and a higher purpose that they stick to no matter what. Picture a company like this. Their goal isn't just to sell more products or services, but to make a positive impact on society, to innovate or to push the boundaries of what is possible. This core ideology becomes their guiding star, informing every decision they make and serving as a rallying point for their employees. We've seen this in action too. Take the case of the National Palace Museum in Taiwan. Amidst rising geopolitical tensions, they conducted their first ever wartime response exercise to protect their valuable collection of Chinese imperial relics. Their core value, safeguarding and preserving cultural heritage. Such companies understand that profits are important, but they're not the be-all and end-all. They recognize that a strong commitment to their core ideology can lead to greater employee satisfaction, customer loyalty, and ultimately, sustainable success. And that's lesson three, the importance of a core ideology that goes beyond just profits. Do you think change is always good? Let's dive into this question. Picture a tree with its roots deep in the soil and its branches reaching out to the sky. Just like this tree, successful companies have a strong core, their roots, which are their values, their mission, their ethos. 
These are non-negotiable and remain constant, providing stability and direction. But just like a tree's branches, these companies also stimulate progress. They reach out, innovate and adapt to the changing environment. They embrace change, but not at the cost of their core values. They understand that change is inevitable, but they also know what should never change. Imagine a company that has stood the test of time. It has weathered economic storms, technological revolutions and shifting customer preferences. How? By preserving its core while stimulating progress. It's like sailing a ship in stormy seas with a steady hand on the wheel and an eye on the horizon. These companies don't fear change. They see it as an opportunity for growth, for innovation, for improvement. But they never lose sight of who they are, what they stand for. They are like the tree, rooted yet reaching, stable yet growing. So, lesson four is about the delicate balance between preserving the core and stimulating progress. What's the biggest, most audacious goal you've ever set for yourself? Now imagine that on a corporate scale. We're talking about big, hairy, audacious goals, or BHAGs for short. These are not your everyday goals. They are grand, ambitious, and could even seem impossible at first glance. But that's the beauty of a BHAG. It's intended to be so bold, so daring, that it pushes the entire organization beyond its comfort zone. In the grand tapestry of corporate success, BHAGs are the lofty peaks that companies strive to conquer. They're not about playing it safe. They're about dreaming big, daring greatly, and pursuing a vision that's larger than life. It's like shooting for the moon. Even if you miss, you'll land among the stars. BHAGs serve as a guiding star, an aspirational target that drives a company forward. They inspire and motivate, rallying everyone around a shared purpose. They stretch the organization's capabilities, fostering innovation, resilience, and a relentless pursuit of excellence. So think about it. What's your BAHAG? What's that one grand audacious goal that could propel your organization into the stratosphere of success? Remember, the bigger the goal, the bigger the potential for transformation. That's lesson five. The power of big, hairy, audacious goals. Have you ever felt like you really belong in a group or organization? Picture this. You're part of an organization where everyone is on the same page, where everyone shares the same values, where everyone is pushing in the same direction. This is not a scene from a sci-fi movie, but a characteristic of many successful companies. These companies often have strong cult-like cultures. They are not just workplaces, but communities where everyone is deeply invested in the mission and vision of the company, where everyone is aligned with the company's core values. This alignment is not accidental. It's cultivated. It's fostered. It's intentional. Companies with cult-like cultures don't just hire anyone. They carefully select individuals who reflect their core values. They impose tight fit standards to ensure that everyone who joins is a good fit for the community. They portray a sense of exclusivity, making membership feel like a privilege, not a right. And when you're in, you're in. These companies utilize formal and informal indoctrination processes to ensure that everyone is fully immersed in the culture. They promote from within, rewarding those who embody the company's values. The result, an organization that is more than a collection of individuals. It's a unified force, driven by a shared vision. It's a community, bound by a common culture. It's an entity that's built to last. So lesson six teaches us about the power of cult-like cultures. Have you ever felt like you're just throwing things at the wall to see what sticks? If your answer is yes, then you're on the right track. In the pursuit of innovation and progress, it's essential to embrace this method. It's called the try a lot of stuff and keep what works principle. Picture this. You're in a dark room and you need to find the light switch. You can't just stand still and hope to stumble upon it. Instead, you start feeling the walls, you reach out, you move around. You try a lot of different spots until your fingers finally hit the switch. That's exactly how this principle works. In the business world, this translates to experimentation. You come up with a variety of ideas, strategies and plans. You test them out, you implement them, you give them a chance to prove their worth. Some might fail, and that's okay. Failure is not the enemy. It's an opportunity to learn, to improve, to innovate. The key is to keep what works and discard what doesn't. And remember, what works today might not work tomorrow. So, this process of trying, testing and refining never really ends. It's a continuous cycle that drives progress and propels you forward. 
And finally, lesson seven, try a lot of stuff and keep what works. 